Well, you know, as I was preparing for this, I went back and I found one of your uh, former professors who's still on the faculty, uh, Harry Lewis uh, in computer science, to try to get some insight into your character uh, back in the day when the picture we saw earlier was uh, a reflection. Um, and one of the things Harry recalled was you had this voracious appetite for reading. You had this immense capacity for learning, a, a sense of curiosity that as we've watched your career, doesn't seem to have narrowed any. And especially as we think about in Alan's introduction, the, the array of topics that your foundation touches on that you have expertise and a knowledge in from public health to education reform to renewable energy. How is it that where many of us who get to a certain level in our career dive deep and narrow and specialize, you've managed to not narrow and keep your curiosity very, very broad? Yeah, certainly during the time I was at Harvard, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Uh, the idea that software was this field that uh, was the opportunity was unbelievable. That became more obvious during the three-year period I was here. Uh, but my dad had been a lawyer. I thought of mathematics, you know, like doing well in the Putnam. That was the coolest thing. Uh, and the computer software, I didn't think those people were as smart as the math people. So it's like, well, am I going to go into the easy field uh, or this really hard field? But uh, anyway, math uh, was fantastic. When I finally picked and decided to go, go to Microsoft, then I got into a period from age uh, 19 uh, to about 40 where I wasn't able to look at the latest on you know, how tornadoes work or how mitochondria work. I was pretty monomaniacal. And when I was able to ask Steve, this is the year 2000, Steve Ballmer, uh, he, he mistakenly graduated, uh, but then he started at Stan... Uh, <laughs> well, I was trying to hire him, but his parents told him you're supposed to graduate, which was fine. But then... He started at Stanford Business School, and he was in his first year, and I thought, oh, this is perfect. I'll get him to drop out of Stanford Business School. Uh, so in a certain sense, he is a dropout. Uh, uh, and he was very key to the success of Microsoft. I mean, uh, he knew a lot of things. But during that period, I didn't get to do much. At Harvard, you know, I took all these courses because it was just so amazing that people were interested in talking about them. And uh, I... I have to say, I never went to a lecture during reading period or any, anything because the courses that I was actually signed up for, I finally started to work on those. Uh, so I was in Hillel the minute it would open to the minute it would close during reading period trying to catch up on, on that other set of courses. So people say I'm a dropout, which is literally true, but <laughs> because I like college courses, the online college courses. There's a company called The Learning Company that I buy uh, tons and tons of their stuff. And I do you know, at least four or five courses a year. In a sense, I like uh, going to college more than anyone. Uh, so <laughs> I, I've sort of made sure my job, certainly post Microsoft, uh, that I get to spend my time meeting with scientists, uh, learning new things, you know, seeing what the hard problems are, and in some cases giving money to people to take on uh, those very, very hard problems.